you watch the first video in the Greenhouse 2.0 series, you got a sense of what I built and why I built it. In short, my greenhouse uses both geothermal heating and compost heating. I've been taking detailed uh, temperature measurements. In this video, I'll highlight the performance of the geothermal system. I'll use the data that I collected to make some concrete predictions about how this uh, system will work in your greenhouse. Here's a summary of my 2018 greenhouse heating system. The lower chamber contains the GAT system. GAT stands for geothermal air heat transfer. The upper chamber holds hot compost. I insulated the outside of the unit with one inch foam board and cover it tightly with a tarp to, to prevent air invasion. I put corrugated drain pipe underground into a U shape. I pump cold uh, greenhouse air underground with a duct fan. The air is warmed as it returns to the greenhouse. I have four U-shaped geothermal wells that are about eight feet deep. The GAT chamber is 32 square feet and insulated on four sides. Each geothermal well has its own 90 cubic feet per minute duct fan that draws 12 watts. This photo of the GAT chamber shows how the duct fans circulate air. The two wells closest to the greenhouse move air from the greenhouse to the GAT chamber and vice versa. If you don't feel like listening to the rest of the video, I'll summarize. The data show I can heat the GAT chamber by about 10 degrees Fahrenheit. It would do better if I would, would have just sealed the GAT chamber rather than exchanging air with the greenhouse. The system also works as an earth battery by storing heat, but I haven't tested that. Keep listening to see the data. To collect the temperature data, I bought this four channel digital thermometer from Amazon for a reasonable price. I've been happy with it. I also bought some two meter long temperature probes to reach lo longer distances than the one meter probes that came with the sensor. Here are the, the three temperature measurements that I took. One is near the floor of the greenhouse. Two is dropped into the GAT chamber. Three is run outside. Here's an hour of measurements. The yellow curve is the outside temperature minus 32 degrees. I subtracted 32 degrees to make the graph easier to view when I plot multiple curves. The outside temperature on this day was just below freezing. The red curve is the difference between the outside and greenhouse temperature. The blue curve is the difference between the GAT chamber and outside temperature. I turned the GAT system on and let it run for about 45 minutes before shutting it off. The temperature inside the GAT chamber rose by 6 degrees Fahrenheit. When I turn the fans off, the temperature inside the GAT chamber drops immediately. This is a reliable measurement because the outside temperature was stable over this hour. When the wind blows, I see large and rapid swings in outside temperature. Unfortunately, we're only heating the greenhouse by about one degree or so. Here's four days of temperature measurements. This graph shows the outside temperature minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The blue curve shown here is the difference between the temperature of the GAT chamber and the greenhouse. You're probably wondering why I don't look at the difference between outside and the GAT chamber. The outside temperature is unstable when the wind blows. The greenhouse temperature is much more steady. An unheated greenhouse starts the night warmer than outside, but by the morning, it will have the same average temperature as outside. Let's analyze day one. It was a cold night, about 21 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 6 C. The GAT fans were off. During the coldest hours, the air in the GAT chamber is about four degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the greenhouse. On day two, I turned the GAT fan on and noticed how the GAT chamber is about uh, 10 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the greenhouse. In other words, turning the fans on raised the temperature inside the GAT chamber by about six degrees Fahrenheit. Notice that the outside temperature wasn't as low on day, as on day one. If it had been as cold as day one, the GAT temperature might have been 12 degrees warmer than the greenhouse. On day three, I left the fans on. This was a much warmer day and the night temperature barely went below freezing. Therefore, the GAT is only eight degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the greenhouse. On day four, I shut the fans off and the temperature inside the GAT chamber dropped to only four degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the greenhouse, about where it was on day one. Now I'll make some conclusions. The data show that this system heated the GAT chamber by as much as 10 degrees Fahrenheit on cold days. Obviously the purpose is not to heat the GAT chamber, but rather to heat the greenhouse. I'll make some predictions on greenhouse heating. My greenhouse is about 4.5 times the volume of a GAT chamber. Therefore, if you have 16 to 20 of these geothermal wells, 
I believe that you can heat the greenhouse by 10 degrees Fahrenheit. 16 to 20 wells in a small greenhouse is only appropriate if you're using benches and have the wells under the benches. You would spend about $300 for the duct fans and $200 for the corrugated drain pipe. The fans consume about 200 watts. If you ran them 24 hours a day, it would cost about $20 per month, assuming 15 cents per kilowatt hour. If you could drill the wells to 16 feet instead of 8 feet, it would improve the efficiency. How much more efficient depends on the soil temperature. The best you can hope for from a geothermal system is to make the greenhouse temperature the same as the soil temperature. I plan to dig a deep hole in my greenhouse and bury some temperature probes uh, to answer this question. So uh, did geothermal work here? Yes and no. My four well system is too small to be the solution to greenhouse heating, but it clearly did heat the insulated gat chamber. The geothermal system works in both directions, heating the greenhouse when it's cold and cooling it when it's hot. I have a nice hot compost pile installed now, so the next video will show how the compost heating worked. Hit subscribe, turn on the notifications, and stay